uh, a year or so ago, um, law enforcement started looking at uh, the issues that the community was experiencing with gang-related issues. And so last year I ran two bills, one of which was the loitering bill that seemed to get a little extra attention. It's actually a very protracted bill that requires a lot of hoops for law enforcement to jump through or whatever be used. There are a number of easier ways to do this than going this route. This is about an eight-step process. But this receives media attention because of the Morales decision of the Supreme Court in 1999. So we just needed to make sure that everybody understood that and that there has been nine states that have gone forward, I think that's what led research told me, with the recommendations of the Supreme Court uh, and model bills and, and laws. And to date, we're not aware of any challenges that have been made uh, given the way that uh, these have been rewritten to put <coughs> constitutional safeguards in and some other things. And so uh, I, I'd be very surprised if many communities would ever get to the step needing to do this type of process to um, get gang members to move from a particular location. Doesn't it have to do more with abandoned property where the property it, owner isn't involved? It, it's written such that it can be any, any public place and so uh, you may end up with a mall, for instance, in a, in a protracted complaint process. And, and if they're not set up as a condominium kind of thing, and you have an out-of-state owner at a mall, you may you may go in that direction. But I I wouldn't think that it would get that far down the road. We we spent six months trying to figure out a way to do it in Oregon, given we had a piece of ground where an absentee landlord wasn't communicating with us for an easier process. And so this was just a tool we found after Ledge, uh, we had our legal people do some research. And, and uh, like I said, there was other states that used it and had no problem, probably because of the same issue. There's easier ways to do this than this way. So, uh, can I ask a question? Sure. How, um, how does it work as far as, um, you know, who nominates what the, does this come from residents who are concerned about a certain well, let's, area? Or let's make you um, a property owner. And, and, and that's not going to work very well because you could do a letter of agency with a law enforcement agency and put up a no trespassing sign and we'd enforce it tomorrow. So we could, do, we could do what you wanted in 24 hours. But if the community and the legislative body have a piece of ground or something where we can't get the normal process done, we can't get a hold of a property owner, then this is just another avenue to do that. So I'm hoping that you no... Know, you know, I, 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 it's, it's kind of ironic because one of the people running for mayor of Los Angeles four years ago, one of them declared the whole city a game for example. Well, this isn't going to work that way. This is, this is for a very specific piece of property. And, and one of the questions that came out last year was, well, um, what if they're in a park having a picnic? And that's a gang-free zone. Well, you know what? That's fine. They can have a picnic in a gang-free zone, but they can't be doing the three things outlined in the bill. They've got to be engaged in those activities. It has to be observed. There has to be a complaint process um, before the officer ever approaches them about it and says, it's been brought to my attention that you're, you're doing this, you're harassing people. That's, the intimidation factor there is, is one of the bigger things in, in the public place. 